and gentlemen, we've gone a little over, and the last session went over a few minutes as well. We'll have time for one, maybe two, probably not two, one question. And the, the first question here at the, uh, oh, we'll have two questions. The first question at the microphone. Um, the Larry Summers question. What's up with tricks and science? <laughs> uh, slightly off topic, nonetheless interesting. Yeah. It's science educated. Yeah, right. Does anyone want to field uh, uh, maybe if there are genetic differences between men and women that explain why more men are in science? Anyone want to touch that? I, I, I just, I, I've never been female. <laughs> but I, I have been black my whole life, and so let me perhaps offer some insight uh, from that perspective, because there are many similar uh, social issues related to access to equal opportunity uh, that we find in the black community as well as the community of women in a male-dominated, white male-dominated society. Um, and I'll be brief, because I want to get, try to get more questions. When I look at throughout my life, I've known that I wanted to do astrophysics since I was nine years old, a first visit to the Hayden Planetarium. I was a little younger than Victor at the time, I was, although he did it before I did. And so, um, so I got to see how the world around me reacted to my expression of these ambitions. And all I can say is the fact that I wanted to be a scientist and astrophysicist was hands down the path of most resistance through the forces of nature, in society, forces of, of society. Anytime I express this interest, teachers would say, don't you want to be an athlete? Or don't you want to, I want to become something that was outside of the paradigms of expectation of, that, of the people in power. And so, so fortunately, my depth of interest with the universe was so deep and so fuel enriched that every one of these curveballs that I was throwing and fences built in front of me and hills that I had to climb, I just weeped for more fuel and I kept going. Now here I am, one, I think, one of the most visible scientists in the land, and I want to look behind me and say, well, where are the others who might have been this? And they're not there. And I wonder how, who, what is the blot on the tracks that I happen to survive that others did not, simply because of the forces of society that prevented at every turn, at every turn. To the point where I have security guards following me as I go through department stores, um, presuming that I'm some, uh, I'm a thief. Uh, I walked out of a store one time, and the alarm went off, and so they came running to me. I walked through the gate. At the same time, a white male walked through the gate, and that guy just walked off with the stolen goods, knowing that they would have stopped me and not him. That's an interesting sort of exploitation of this, yeah. of the, what a scam that was. I think people should do that more often, all right? <laughs> so, so, so my, my life experience tells me that when you don't find blacks in the sciences, you don't find women in the sciences, I know that these forces are real and I had to survive them in order to get where I am today. So before we start talking about genetic differences, Right. You gotta come up with a system where there's equal opportunity, then we can have that conversation. Yeah. And, and we'll, we'll have uh, uh, another question for, and please direct it to one of the panelists. Well, this really isn't the question. I just want to let everybody know. My name is Emily Kingsley, and for the last 38 years, 